Let's suppose you need to record the temperature of the room. For that you will at least require a thermometer. Let's go into the market and look at the various kinds of thermometers that are available. If you look at the screen, on the left you will see the classical thermometer that is available in a glass tube and is being provided with a scale or the temperature scale that is usually measured in degree Celsius or degree Fahrenheit. On the right you have a similar kind of thermometer but the display here is readily available in the form of a digital display. Let's have both of these thermometers and play with them. Now the task here is to measure the temperature of the room but we'll measure this temperature in different ways. Let's suppose you are measuring the temperature of the room all the way from morning to evening. So the resultant graph would look something like this. So I'm having on the horizontal axis, I have the time. On the vertical axis, I have the temperature. So the graph might appear something like this. In the morning, the temperature may be low, it might rise till noon and will fall by the evening. If you observe this graph, we will see that the values of this temperature are available at each and every instance of time. So the independent variable that is time here is continuous in nature. What about the dependent variable? Well, the dependent variable is also continuous. What I mean by continuous is the values are defined in continuum along all the range that it is being supported. That means, say for example, if you have value as 36 degrees Celsius, you can also have the values as 36.1 degrees Celsius, 36.001 degrees Celsius and so on. No matter what the value is that is there available in the continuum range that is being supported by the thermometer. So here both the independent variable T and the dependent variable that is temperature both are continuous in nature. Let me write that. So here the time is continuous, it is continuous time. Also the signal is continuous. So we can say that it is continuous amplitude. We call it as a continuous amplitude because within a certain range of temperature values, all sort of values are available. So there is no gap in between. For example, if we look at the values in between these two intervals, any value between these two intervals exist in the signal. That's what I call as a continuous time or continuous amplitude. Now let's measure this temperature in a different fashion. Now say we are measuring the temperature not continuously at all the time instances but at specific instances of time. So instead of measuring the temperature let's suppose at all the instances of time we are measuring it at say at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. at discrete instances of time. So the signal may look something like this. So here the signal 
I'm drawing the signal at various instances. So let's say here, here, there and so on. So I'm measuring the temperature at different instances of time. So time here maybe let's say 8 a.m. maybe here 9 a.m. maybe 11 a.m. and so on. So what's new in the second case? In the second case the time is discretized but the amplitude that is the temperature still remains the continuous quantity. You may see that the values here can be anything in the range provided. So although the time has been discretized, we are measuring the values at different instances of time, the amplitude still remains continuous. So the value at a particular instance can be any value in the continuum that is being supported by the temperature scale. So in this case, it is the time that is discrete so it is discrete time but the amplitude is still continuous it is continuous amplitude the signals for which the amplitude is a continuous quantity those signals are referred as analog signals. So the term analog, always remember it refers to the amplitude. The amplitude, if it is continuous, it is called as an analog signal. Now let's look at the thermometer on the right. Let's measure the temperature with respect to the thermometer on the right. Let's do the same experiment. If you're trying to measure the temperature using the thermometer on the right, continuously at all instances of time, the signal appears to be something like this. So remember here that the temperature is being measured at every instance of time. But how the temperature would look like the graph would look like you may see here you may observe here that the display available in this you may see that the digital display that is being available in this thermometer is having some precision some fixed precision so in this case it is 36.0 so it is supporting the precision till one decimal unit one decimal place so it can be 36.1 it can show the values 36.5 6 and so on but it can't show the value at 36.15 or 36.16 or 36.123 so those values are not supported in a sense the amplitude now instead of having the continuous set of values in this case the amplitudes are discretized so we have only a fixed set of values that are available so if you measure the temperature of the room at every instance of time with this thermometer then the graph would look something like this. So the amplitude now is not continuous. It is in discrete sense because only some set of values are available for reading. So the resultant graph may look something like this. Why there is a sudden jump over these values? Because Middle values are unavailable for reading purpose. Say if it is 36 degrees Celsius, the another value is 36.1 degrees Celsius, but middle value, let's say 36.05 is unavailable. 
So there are some discrete set of values. So the time here is continuous, but the temperature here is a discrete quantity. So here the time is continuous, so continuous time. But the amplitude here is discrete in nature, so it is discrete amplitude. Now if you try to record this signal, the temperature, not at every instance of time, but let's say at some specific instances of time or at discrete instances, the resultant signal would look something like this. Now here, both the time and the amplitude are discrete in nature. So the resultant signal would look something like this. Now we are having the discrete time and the discrete amplitude also. So it can't take any value in the range. It has to take only a specific set of values. So here the amplitude values are one among the fixed set of values that are being supported by this thermometer. So here the time is discrete and also the amplitude that is the temperature is discrete. So let me write that it is discrete time discrete amplitude signal and this signal is also called as a digital signal. In this course, we shall be looking at the analog signals in general. So both the continuous time signals and the discrete time signals. And we shall allow the amplitude to be continuous only. In order to differentiate the continuous time signal and the discrete time signal, we'll use different notations. The notation for continuous time signal in general would be x of t that would indicate that the signal is continuous in nature. And here if we note that the values are being taken at some specific distances at some discrete instances of time. That means suppose the first value is here. The second value appears at some distance, let that distance be t and usually this distance is fixed. So we can say that the values are being taken at different instances of time and that too at we can say if t is fixed then we can say that it is being taken at integer multiples of t. So the first instance, let's say if it is at zero, then second instance appears at T duration, capital T duration and so on. So this signal, discrete time signal can be represented as X of, well, now the T is not continuous. It is in integer multiple of capital T. And if you consider capital T as unity of one seconds, then this can be represented as X of capital N, sorry, it's the small n, where the small n is the integer. This integer indicates the instance number at which the sample has been taken. 
irrespective of what is the sampling duration. So we shall be referring x of n as a kind of sequence, a sequence of numbers that are available one after the other. We shall see more on this in the next module.